to you. Hi guys, we just finished uh, the financial fitness forum and we're in for a treat. I'm with of my, I'm with one of my idols, one of the people that you should listen to in the financial industry because he not only just talks, but what he talks, he backs up with his life, eh? and that's what's amazing about it. That you see people who really believe on what they say and do, and it's what he does is worth emulating. I'm talking about the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Hello, Rex hello. Mendoza. Hello, yeah. So, of course, people know who you are, but they there, there's probably snippets of your life that uh, people can learn that they can be inspired about it. So, first question: uh, When did you make your first million? <laughs> Many people know that came from nothing. I'm the Laloma Sampaloc boy. Mm -hmm. So I, I really had to start from scratch. Uh, working on a job that my father didn't want me to take because he wanted me to be a lawyer. Oh. I did not. I ran away with the tuition money. I started the job. So from age 21... So that, that was in college? That was in college? Yeah. Tuition so from money, okay. age 21 to 27, I worked on my own, started investing. So I said, maybe in six years, you know, I, I really earned that first million. Six years, net worth, right? But the strategy that I had was to earn the next one in half the time okay. and the next one in again half the time so it's all an accumulation process that that was unstoppable that's that's interesting i didn't know that so you did did you graduate from college or no 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 i did okay. but it was a pre-law course which i you know took up business i said i'm gonna be corporate law because my father wanted me to be a lawyer eventually passing the up law exam about to enroll i got the tuition money and ran away mm. and got home after two months with a job Okay. So I graduated, but I did not become the professional that my father wanted did, me to did be. Did he get mad after? <laughs> of course, he wasn't talking to me. <laughs> for, for, okay. I was his last chance. I was the youngest in the family. I was his last chance to have a lawyer, and he didn't get it. So mm -hmm. uh, I ended up to be, in his words, the only non-professional in my family. <laughs> but poetic justice, huh? they lived their twilight years in my place with my mm. wife. So I took care of them when they were old. Wow, very nice. So you said that it was half the time no from 1 million to the next level then then the next pero did that happen because you were climbing the corporate ladder very fast or was that more entrepreneurship that's that's really more of passive income oh. because you know even if i was like a past rising star in corporate i mean how much Until do they now. give you how much do they give you whenever you get promoted okay. not really that much mm. but it's the money that you set aside and invest right um, stock market i was i was in the stock market very early okay. and and that's where it became exponential because the more i transferred money from passive income what i earned you know transferring it from active income to passive income that's when it really really rose very fast what was that uh, when you were single you were allotting a portion of your income to it uh, or you're putting almost, everything you're putting everything almost everything because uh, even if my dad hated me eventually i came back home and lived with him okay uh, so best, best way to save money <laughs> exactly okay. so almost like you know and and i felt i can take a risk why if i fail mm -hmm. he will still feed me <laughs> yes, right? yes, yes so from then until i got married in 29 okay. uh, nine, you know uh, when i was 29 i got married from that time you know i was continuously investing i i, I think 20% is a low. I mean, definitely most of the money that I got, stock market, for mm, long term. Wow. I, I remembered from one of your stories, you bought PLDT, then yes. it, it dropped. Uh, can you tell more? Can you tell people when, more about when that? When I bought PLDT, you know, that was when Aquino got shot, mm. right? It started at 1150. I was starting to invest at 1150. Dropped to 650. Dropped to 350. But my context then was PLDT, a well-managed company. It's a monopoly. You need a phone, you need to line up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They give you a line, mm -hmm. may party line ka pa. <laughs> right? That was how dominant it was. Okay. So I felt as soon as the economy turns around, PLDT will fly. And sure enough, from 350, it became 1,000. Mm -hmm. that, that's where you took, prof took, took profits after that? I took profits because my wife wanted to buy a house. Ha okay. Yes. Question of stock market related. Is there anything that you see in the same parallel as what PLDT was before in today's setting, is there anything that uh, is probably battered down, is probably looks expensive, but uh, you think will be another growth sector in this economy? I think I can say for all the stocks that we have today, mm -hmm. they're all badly battered because of mm -hmm. what was happening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you're 
you know, people were buying Ayala Land as, well, at 47. Mm. Now it's trading at 40 or even so, a little yeah, yeah. under 40. They're yeah. not buying it. I mean, that's real value. So I feel the entire market is selling down value stocks, mm. which we can pick up today. Um, I, I don't care if it goes a little further. I'm not like you. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm not a trading, you know, personality. But hey, I have the cash flow. So if it mm. goes down, I'll buy more. If it goes down, I, I'll buy even more. Mm. I have the liquidity because when I was going up, when it was going up, I think we all do that. I top sliced. Mm, okay. I top sliced. So I have the liquidity. So I'm not worried about it. Nice. Um, here, here's something interesting. Uh, the BSV. This is, I don't know if you're okay. No, this is a bit technical. This is a bit technical. Uh, the BSP maintained interest rates. Uh, the people were projecting that they would uh, increase it. Yes. Yeah, it would, it would be it's something that was part of the projections already. Uh, with that, how, how do you see it? How, do you expect more volatility in the markets? Or how does it change the way you would invest and trade as well? I will. Uh, because first and foremost, obviously, I'll have to mix a bit of this portfolio and move certain assets into dollars mm. because obviously the the currency will be weaker mm. uh, let's face it so if, if i have a, an allocation of 20 percent of my assets in dollars it will probably be 30 or 40 in the next few months okay i will be doing that second there would be vulnerabilities in our you know in our economy especially in the companies that are dollar earners mm. okay no the dollar earners they will be getting more of a plus mm, mm. but the guys who are like importing. indebted yeah. importing people who are negative on the dollar i'll, I'll be wary about mm. getting involved in these companies uh do you think this will because what the bsp did also you know they uh they increased uh the reserve rate uh, they decreased the reserve rate meaning more uh money more liquidity will, will flow into yeah. the system are you scared about how that impacts inflation as well um and, and that's why and inflation is that's why inflation is almost like run away i mean mm -hmm. in, in the last two months but you see I, I i while i don't agree the bsp is making a bet that the economic growth will push the nominal side so much so that even if it's inflationary there will still be real growth okay and because of the build 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 program they're just gonna take the liquidity and pour it into the countryside mm. so there, there is logic to it. I'm not saying they're sleeping on the mm -hmm. job, but maybe they don't have the same thinking as we do. Maybe they have different priorities. That's the, that's the way I see it. But instead of contradicting what they're saying, mm. I'm going to be looking at the opportunities. Mm. Like some companies are going to be blessed, but some companies are going to be challenged. I will move money to the companies that will be blessed. You think consumption stocks will, because of uh, what they did with the tax reform law, they had an ex more people have more disposable income now that it will somehow compensate that rising inflation but more disposable income uh, it won't affect the Jollibees it won't affect the Shakeys it won't affect the pure gold still on the contrary they're gonna be moving up mm. because of the consumption see the problem we have in this country is that there's more disposable income being thrown out because of train mm, yeah, technically yeah. what these guys should be doing is saving that money right they should be saving that money so that they're not gonna be paying taxes because taxes have shifted from income to consumption yeah the yeah. problem is if they're gonna consume they will be paying eventually more taxes mm. so I'd like people to start thinking about what they got that 7% of income to invest that and invest that on a continuous basis as if they did not get the tax break because if they spend that they will be spending more on taxes moving forward I guess people say okay this is for the poor yes I will agree if the poor doesn't spend it the rich does not spend enough money as a percentage of their total income like the poor does and that's the reason why this is a plus for many of them right so me i'm going to be looking at it that way i mean and that's the reason why we have a tough job to do we have to educate more people we have to shift them to savings and investments and not consumption you you advocate a lot about uh investing in funds especially for people who uh i don't no, they don't have the time or the know-how to go into it. Uh, what's your, I guess, biggest take or encouragement for those that are, are still scared in spite of the great economic conditions? Uh, they have more disposable income right now. Uh, what's something that you can, you can say to jo actually jolt them? Uh, you know, there is no excuse anymore. Today, a mutual fund investment can go for as low as 1,000 pesos. And I'm not kidding. 1,000, even 500. So there is no excuse. Even a security guard can open an account like that. The important thing is to start setting money aside continuously. Allowing yourself to trust a fund manager who knows the markets better. 
See, if they know the markets better, your job is just to contribute continuously to build your kitty. The thing about mutual fund investing is that it's long term, and if you're doing this on a consistent basis, the ups and downs shouldn't be relevant to you. So look at your dreams, look at the goals that you've set for yourself, and forge the discipline. Because as I've said, in today's financial markets, capital market development has gone to the point where even the small guys can now participate. Again, 1,000 to start an account, 1,000 to add on a monthly basis, I don't think that's much. So anyone can do it and anyone must, anyone must do it. Now, majority of the whoa, majority <laughs> of the people who watch this videos are normally the 25 to 45 year old age group. Uh, what do you suggest? Equity, balance, bond, uh, they just track the PSEI as a whole. Where should they invest if they they probably have more than 20 plus years still uh, holding their, their money? And there's more disposable income now for people who are younger because of the uh, BPO industry and a lot of remittances that we're getting. Best performing asset class on a long-term basis, as long as you have the horizon, would be equities. Whether you want to manage it because you're listening to this guy, very brilliant <laughs> coach, right? Or are you asking a fund manager to do it for you? Putting your money in equities will be the blessing that you're going to look at if you have that long runway. That will always work. All right. Last two questions before we put this so close. Your takes on cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and not not the not the smaller coins, but just the main the main ones. Me, unlike you, I, I'm still avoiding it. Okay. Um, not that I don't believe it. In fact, you know, one of my idols, Christine Lagarde, said, "Never, never discount that it can be the future." So I'm trying to learn and understand it. And that's the reason why I'm not into it yet, because I'm not yet comfortable. I might get there, maybe sometime soon, or maybe even later, but for the moment, I'm not that comfortable. All right. Lastly, for, uh, for the next generation, what, what can you say to people who are dreaming to be like you someday? Any inspiring words to just close this video off? Start off with great goals. Uh, it's always uh, the why. Start with your big why and move it to major goals. Goals that you like for yourself. Goals that you're going to be working on again and again and again within your track. So don't let people steal your dreams. Dream big dreams because you'll be able to fulfill them if you just put on the work, if you just put on the discipline. Amazing. This is just 12 minutes now, but if you want to get more of this, you can catch this in this book. Yeah, <laughs> Trailblazing Success. It talks about how you... It's my success manual. Mm. Everything from the why that I said to the goals, to the execution, to the follow through. So if you want to learn more about it, this is the National Bookstore. It's already a, a uh, bestseller, bestseller yeah. already. So thank you guys. Um, th videos like this are really here to inspire you that you can learn a lot from uh, dif different people that we can hear their stories. And from that, I hope that it inspires you, but it also encourages you and pushes you uh, to invest. And if there's one thing that you got from this, I hope it pushes you to start something because if you don't start something, all of this will just be head knowledge. So. Yeah from the Financial Fitness Forum. Thank you so much, guys. And see Rex Mendoza again in Icon 2018 in Samsung Hall, also here in uh, SMR. So see you in May. God see bless you, you all. See you. Thank you so much.